Hello friends, how are you? I hope you are doing very well. You are again with Ruchi Jain and well, very warm welcome to all of you to my channel Learn German the Easy Way. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please do consider to subscribe it and recommend your friends and family well as well. Whosoever wants to learn German. In this video, we have explained present perfect tense in German and it is in the series of the same uh, subject. This is part two. Here on the screen, you can see few words, repariert, besucht, gesungen, what are these? These are the participle soi form of the verb. In the perfect tense, we use these kind of verbs. So are you ready to go ahead? Let's start. In a very simplified manner, let's, let's understand tenses. So, present tense, past tense, future tense. Present perfect tense, past perfect tense and future perfect tense. So, that's all we do have in German. Not uh, present continuous or past continuous or future continuous or present perfect continuous. We do not have those tenses. So, what a relief for you guys and for us as well. So, what do we call these tenses in German language? Again, we are using a chart. The Zeiten, Presence, that is present tense. Preteritum, that is past tense. Preteritum, Futur Eins. Futur Eins. Then comes perfect. Perfect is present perfect. Presence perfect. Plus quam perfect. Plus quam perfect. That is past perfect tense. And futur zwei, which is future perfect tense. Okay. So once again, along with me, if you want to um, get hold of the pronunciation, the sighting. The Zeiten, Presence, Preteritum, Futurines, Perfect, Plus Quam Perfect, Futur Zwei, Futur Zwei. Yeah, right. Very good. Let's go ahead. Now, let's understand what these tenses mean. Ah, here I have written everything in German, but I'll explain in English as well. The Zeiten, as we already know now, tenses, which means tenses. Now, presence, that is present tense. And what does it mean in German? That is, we call Gegenwart. Gegenwart, present. Preteritum, past tense. In German, we call it Vergangenheit. Vergangenheit. Then comes perfect, or in German, we call it perfect. Full enditor, gegenwart, almost ending of the present. The job is almost done, right now, recently done. That is perfect as we know in English, the same meaning. So, perfect, full enditor, gegenwart. Next comes plus quam perfect. That is past perfect, which means in German, for vergangenheit. As we know, preteritum. 
we said Fergangen height, which is already gone, which is already happened, past. And now before past, what we call past perfect. So that is in German we call for Fergangen height. Next comes Futurines, that is Zukunft, Zukunft, that is future tense. Simple future in English sometimes we call it. Then comes Futur Zwei, that is for Zukunft. Now you can see this uh, similarity in plus quam perfect or past perfect. We have just added a prefix for. For means before or the things which have already happened. So for Fergangen height, that is uh, past perfect tense, and for Zukunft, that is future perfect tense. So once again, along with me, presence, Gegenwart. Preteritum Fergangenheit. Perfect, full and it up, Gegenwart. Plus quam perfect, full Fergangenheit. Futur 1, Zukunft. Futur 2, for Zukunft. I hope now these words are a little bit clear to you. You can repeat and you can again go back to the slide if you want, uh, if you have any confusion. So let's go ahead. Now, thus perfect. Though we have got all the tenses in the list, but in this uh, video, we are just going to learn uh, perfect tense, that is present perfect tense. And there are seven several parts of this uh, perfect tense, which we are going to learn in coming videos. So, what is the rule? How to frame the sentence using perfect tense? So, this is the rule. Subject plus helping verb plus object plus participles why now you must be wondering what do you mean by helping verb and participles why you must be knowing helping verb there are some helping verbs in english as well like i am going here m is helping verb in german language there are only two helping verbs haben or sein either you will use haben or you will use sein but now there are certain rules when to use haben when to use sein most of the verbs use haben, but there are some rules uh, when to use sein that we are going to learn in next video. So, right now, just simple sentence framing. Subject plus helping verb plus object plus participle why. Now, you must be wondering what is participle why. It's, it means it's participle. In German, uh, each verb is having its participle. That is called participle why. And we have to learn it by heart. Because all the verbs do not follow the regular rules. So let's see. Slowly, slowly we'll understand how to use this perfect. How to make participles why? Now, simplest way. First of all, we are going to understand how to uh, make participles why for regular verbs, which are also called weak verbs. Now, this is the basic rule. In which, what do we do? We take GE plus STAM. STAM, which means basic form of the verb. Plus T. At the end of the verb T. So, let's see. So, this GE is the prefix. Then we take the basic form of the Grund form, which we call in German Grund form or STAM of the verb. Then we add T at the end. That is how we make the participle swai form. Let's see some of the examples. For example, spielen. That we already know. We have done lots of exercises before as well. Spielen to play, which means to play. Now, how how to take the stam form? Stam form. How to take grund form or uh, basic form of the verb is spiel. En is the ending. So we'll remove en. Then we'll get the ground form, ground form or the basic form of the uh, verb. So, we are adding GE plus ground form or basic form of the verb plus T. So, the result will be Gespielt. Gespielt. That will be the participle swai form of Spielen. Let's take one more example. Haben. Very familiar verb. Now, again, we have to take the uh, stam form or basic form of the verb that is 
hub when we remove en then the we'll, then we'll get hub so again follow the same rule ge plus hub plus t so we'll get the uh, participles y gehabt for verb haben we are having the same form gehabt just like that let's go ahead till now we have learnt how to uh, make the participles y form of regular verbs or weak verbs now the next category is the verbs ending with i e r e n this is the second category how to make the participles y form in this kind of verbs for example photographierin as the name suggest photography to do the photography that's the meaning photographierin look at the verb the word this verb is ending i e r e n so to make the participles y form for this verb what we have to do we have to remove the en at the ending and we have to add t so the participles y form will be photographiert instead of photographieren the participles y form will become photographiert we have to remove the ending we have to take the stamm form and we have to add the t at the end so this in this category in which the verbs which are ending with i e r e n that is how we make the participles y form let's take some more examples studieren to study which means here also the uh, verb is ending with i e r e n now how to frame the participles y again the same rule you have to take the basic form of the verb that is studier and you have to add the t at the end so it will become studiert photographierin photographiert studierin studiert next word is telefonierin to telephone or to phone to call someone telefonierin we have to take the basic form that is telefonier and we have to add the t to make it uh, make the participles y form so telefonierin telefoniert next verb is reparieren again reparieren the verb is ending with i e r e n so we'll remove the ending e n we'll take the basic form of the verb reparier or and we'll add add t so the word will become reparieret photographiert studiert telefoniert reparieret let's take one more example to uh, sorry diskutieren diskutieren to discuss diskutiert that will be the participles y form the verb is ending with i e r e n very easy to recognize this kind of verbs so how to make the participles y form photographieren studieren telefonieren reparieren diskutieren so all these verbs will be having a t at the end with the stamm form so the participles y form will be photographiert studiert telefoniert reparieret diskutiert i hope it is very clear this category let's go ahead one more example manipulieren to manipulate manipulieren the participles y form will be manipuliert manipuliert so let's again with me photographiert studiert telefoniert repariert diskutiert and manipuliert i hope it's clear now so let's go ahead now the next category will be verbs with separable prefixes till now we have learned two categories one regular verb participles y form for regular verbs or uh, weak verbs second category is the verbs ending with i e r e n so now the third category is verbs with separable prefixes now you must be getting what do you mean by separable prefixes so let's see and understand using some of the examples first example i have taken anschalten so can you uh, see what is the prefix here here is the prefix an anschalten that is how we pronounce it 
unschalten which means to switch on unschalten to switch on now how to make the uh, participle swai form for these kind of verbs so look here on the screen un now that ge which we have done which we have used in the first uh, regular for, uh, verbs again we have to use here as well but not at the start it will come after the prefix so the participle swai form will be un geschaltet un geschaltet again the same rule just you have to take the prefix ahead of ge the same rule you can see ge is there uh, uh, before the main verb and it's ending with et because we cannot uh, pronounce the word properly when we do not add e so the participle swai form for this verb is an geschaltet to switch on now let's take one more example ausschalten an geschalten ausschalten so here again the prefix is aus so the participle swai form will be aus geschaltet aus geschaltet et at the end ge after the prefix that is how we'll frame or we'll make the participle swai form it means to switch off anschalten ausschalten they are just opposite anschalten angeschaltet ausschalten ausgeschaltet let's take one more example abschalten i have taken similar verbs so that you can compare them you can understand the meaning and you can remember them so that it will be clear in your mind ki how to like what kind of verb is it how to make the participle swai form for this kind of verbs that is why ab schalten ab geschaltet ab is the prefix here schalten is the same how form or the verb ab geschaltet again the ending is et it uh, it means ab schalten means to turn off next verb is ein schalten au an schalten aus schalten ab schalten now ein schalten they are used in different context that is why it doesn't mean that anschalten and einschalten both are same they are used in different context so you will uh, when you will go ahead with your studies and levels you will understand how to use these kind of verbs and where to use which verb where we have to use at which place i am just giving an idea anschalten ausschalten they are just usually used for switches switch off the lights or fan or something like that or computer that is how we use anschalten ausschalten abschalten and einschalten they are used to turn off or turn on there are other meanings as well just for basic knowledge we i have written the meaning to turn on or to turn off einschalten again ein is the prefix ge we have to add to make it participle swai and et at the end so the participle swai form will be ein geschaltet let's take one more example very simple ein kaufen kaufen to buy ein kaufen is also to buy or to shop or to go on shopping and things like that ein is the prefix kaufen the verb main verb main form of the verb now ein prefix will come first ein ge kauft you can see if you remove the prefix the uh, verb is following the same rule almost the same rule as weak verbs so the participle swai form for this verb will be ein gekauft kauf is the stamp form let's take one more example abstellen abstellen ab is the prefix stellen is the uh, second part of the verb when we remove this ab then we have to put the g then gestellt ab gestellt that is how we'll uh, make the participle swai form for this verb ab stellen which means to stop ab gestellt gestellt we have to take the stamp form then at the end we have to add the t so that is how we'll make the participle swai forms for the verbs which are having separable prefixes again once again if you want to repeat uh, please uh, speak with me or follow me an gestellt ausgeschaltet abgeschaltet eingeschaltet eingekauft abgestellt abgestellt let's go ahead now some more examples with the same category verbs with separable prefixes 
just to have more clarity uh, in this category. Next verb is unmakin. You can easily find out what is the prefix here. Un, unmakin, ungemarked. Again, it means to turn on, but in a different context. Ungemarked. Ausmakin, ausgemarked, to turn off. Ungemarked, ausgemarked. Next verb is aufmachen. Aufgemacht. Very easy to frame the participle so I form aufgemacht. To open. To open. Zu machen. Zu gemacht. Zu machen. Zu gemacht. To close or to shut any window or door kind of thing. So anmachen, angemacht, ausmachen, ausgemacht, aufmachen, aufgemacht. Zu machen, zu gemacht. You should not be confused with these kind of verbs. Next verb is ab machen. Ab machen. Ab gemacht. Very simple. You can see here the participle so I form will be prefix plus ge plus term form plus t. To remove. Ab machen is to remove. Next verb is aufräumen. 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 Auf is the uh, prefix G aufräumen geräumt auf geräumt which means to clean auf geräumt to clean go ahead now the next category is verbs with inseparable prefixes so how to frame a participle so I form for the verbs which are having inseparable prefixes which are no, which looks like it is having a prefix but there is no prefix in those kind of verbs. So let's understand this or make it clear with some examples. First one is besuchen. So you must be wondering zuchen is one word and be we have added a prefix no. There is no prefix. They looks like that they are having a prefix but there is no prefix. Bezuken is one word and it doesn't, uh, it's not related to searching. Zuken is to search, but there is no search in this word. So Bezuken is to visit and the participle so I form will be Bezukt. Let's take one more example. Verkaufen. So Verkaufen. You must be wondering, fair is also um, a prefix. No, there is no prefix here as well. Verkaufen, Verkauft. Very simple, only you have to take the stamp form of the verb and you have to add the T at the end. So, Bezuken is to visit, Verkaufen is to sell. And the participle soy form will be Bezukt und Verkauft. Let's take one more example, Erleben. Erleben, participle soy form will be Erlebt, to experience. Erlebt, to experience. Leben, to leave. Er it's not a prefix, it is a one word, erleben. And the participle so I will be erlebt to experience. The complete word meaning will change, even though they are like coming from some other meaning. But when we get some uh, prefix like that, er, ver, the meaning will change. Let's take one more example. Beachten. Beachten. Participle so I form will be beachtet. Here you can see again we have added extra e just because of the sake of for the sake of pronunciation. Be acted to observe to observe. Let's see one more example. Befolgen. Participle so I form will be befolgt and it means to obey. Befolgen befolgt. Let's see one more example. Fera breden. Fera breden. Fera breded. Fera braided to make an appointment. Fera braided. Here you can see in all these kind of verbs, you have just you are just taking the stam form of the verb and you are adding t. So it's as simple as that to understand and to use. So this is the next category verbs with inseparable prefixes. Just um, uh, just speak along with me. Bezukt, verkauft, erlebt, beachtet, befolgt. Yeah, that's right. Let's go ahead. Now, the next category is irregular verbs. So, participle Y forms of the verbs 
uh, which do not follow any standard rules and regulations. So they are called irregular verbs. Here, let's see some of the examples. Zingen, zingen, as the name suggests, it means to sing in English. So the participle swai form will be gezungen, totally changed. So zingen, gezungen. You just have to learn it. There is no guess, no trick, nothing. Just uh, as the more you will read it, the more you try it, use it, the better you will get. Let's see some more examples. Geben, geben, to give. The participle swai form will be ge geben. Ge geben. Essen, gegesen, to eat. Essen, gegesen. Finden, gefunden. Finden, to find, gefunden, found. So, next verb is verstehen. Verstehen, to understand. Participle swai form will be totally changed. Verstanden, verstanden. So, there is no fixed rule that you have to add the G. So, that is why I am saying you have to learn it by heart. The more you will use, the better you will get. Next verb is trinken. The participle swai form will be getrunken, to drink. Zingen, geben, essen, finden, verstehen, trinken. The words are quite clear and quite similar to English as well. So you can understand them what should be the meaning of these kind of verbs and how to make the participle swai form that you have to learn. So once again along with me, gesungen, zingen, gesungen, geben, gegeben, essen, gegesen, finden, gefunden, Verstehen, verstanden, trinken, getrunken. Very good. Let's go ahead. Some more examples for such kind of verbs. Schreiben, schreiben, to write. The participle swai form will be geschrieben. Now you have to very, you have to be very careful while writing this spelling because it is in the first one schreiben, e i, but in the participle swai form. It has become I-E. That is why the pronunciation as well changed. Geshriben. So, be careful while, write, while writing such kind of participle swai forms. Most of the students, they do mistake over here. Shriben, geshriben. Spreshen. Geshproken. Geshproken. To speak. To write. To speak. Shriben, spreshen. Geschrieben, gesprochen, totally changed. Next one is sehen, sehen, gesehen, gesehen, to see. Ne uh, next verb is wissen, gewusst, wissen, gewusst, to know. Let's take some more examples. Schlafen, to sleep, geschlafen. Schlafen, geschlafen, to sleep. Stehen, to stand or to become. Stehen, gestanden, gestanden. Do you remember? Verstehen, verstanden, just like that. Stehen, gestanden. Here you can see, mostly we have added GE and the rest of the sentence, rest of the word is changed. Somewhere it is, spelling has changed and somewhere... Uh, we have taken as it is. So, uh, there is no particular rule or trick to learn these kind of verbs. They are irregular verbs and you have to just learn it by heart. So, once again along with me, please repeat. Schreiben, geschrieben, sprechen, gesprochen, sehen, gesehen, wissen, gewusst, schlafen, geschlafen, stehen, gestanden. Yes. Right? Now, Let's see, we have seen many categories. Now, see some of the examples with each category. The first example I have taken here is, I have studied mathematics. Very simple. The first category. Ich habe Mathematik studiert. Do you remember the verb? Studieren. So, how to make the participle swai? Just you have to remove en and you have to add the t. Ich habe Mathematik studiert. Ich subject habe a conjugated form of the helping verb. 
mathematic is the object studied participle swear form let's go ahead let's take one more example have you have you bought the bread for weekend have you brought the have you bought the bread for weekend so it's a question form let's see how to frame the um, this german version hast du das brot fürs wochenende eingekauft hast du das brot fürs now you must be wondering what is fürs actually it's a uh, combined word there are two words in it für and das that is the article but in short we can also write fürs für das wochenende wochenende is neutro that is why das wochenende and instead of writing separately für das wochenende uh, we write fürs has du das brot fürs wochenende eingekauft this is separable prefix you can see here separable prefix so für das wochenende you can also write that that is also correct and in short you can uh, also write as a composite word so again has du das brot für das wochenende eingekauft let's go ahead let's take one more example she has closed the window she has closed the window sie hat das fenster zugemacht again separable prefix sie hat das fenster fenster window zugemacht to close i hope it is quite clear to you sie hat das fenster zugemacht some more examples in another categories on sunday we have visited our relatives on sunday we have visited our relatives am sonntag haben wir unsere verwandte besucht am sonntag haben wir unsere verwandte besucht you can see here uh, we have written the subject at the third position so you must be wondering why subject should come at first position it's not a question still uh, let me uh, tell you okay this on sunday timing the site and or the timing you can write at the first position either you can write at the third position i can also write the same sentence like we are haben am sonntag unsere verwandte besucht that is also correct just uh, for the sake of the sounding it sounds better when you use am sonntag haben wir that sounds much better than the previous one that is why we have written it like this but you cannot change the position of the helping verb it should come at the second position so that is very important you can interchange the uh, subject and the uh, timings but you cannot interchange the verb position okay so make it clear Am Sonntag haben wir unsere Verwandte, Verwandte, Relatives, Relatives besucht. Besucht, Partizip Zwei Form for the verbs which do not have separable prefixes. Let's see one more example. Have you understood the question? Have you understood the question? It's a question word. Habt ihr die Frage verstanden? Habt ihr die Frage verstanden? Verstehen, to understand, verstanden, Partizip Zwei Form. now i have taken the helping verb at the first posi position in the conjugated form according to the pronoun ihr you all that is the plural of the second person habt ihr die frage verstanden then question mark let's see one more example they have seen all the photos they that is the third person plural they have seen all the photos sie haben alle bilder gesehen Sie haben alle Bilder gesehen. Gesehen, that is the participle swai form of irregular verb. Object alle Bilder. First position subject, second helping verb in the conjugated form. So as simple as that. So whenever you will read in the books, more examples will come, and you have to just understand ki which kind of grammar we have used here. That is how you will go further. you have understood this uh, present perfect tense in this part as well if you have any queries or any questions please do write in the comment section if you liked my video please do express your feelings thank you very much danke danke du sehr if you haven't subscribed my channel if and you wish to learn german language in an easy way please do subscribe my channel and do recommend the uh, this channel to your friends family or whosoever want to learn uh, foreign language this german language thank you very much once again please ring the bell and wait for my next interesting video
choose alfidazine.